Megazone 2-3. I used to call it Megazone 23 until the internet proved me wrong. So, here's that. I have a lot to say about this anime and I'm really excited because this is one of my favorite anime of all time and one of the best of 80s anime in my opinion. So, I saw part 1 and 2 when I was a little kid where I really shouldn't have to. I was 12 years old in 1994 I believe and there were a lot of firsts for me when I saw this. It was the first time I ever saw a really detailed sex scene which I did not understand what was going on and no one knew that I saw this back then. A little story, this laser disc set belonged to my dad and back then his laser discs were off limits. The only way we can watch them is by his permission and he has to be with us when we watch them. But the troublemaker that I am, I used to sneak around in the middle of the night on a school night and watch a lot of his laser discs with really low volume. And it wasn't just anime, there were horror movies and film noir as well. But of course most of the time I used to watch his anime laser discs. So during the summer of that year, dad bought this set and he was discussing it with my uncle. And they were both really excited to see this and how this set includes the American version of the second episode. They were making fun of it because of the changes, which is something the US I believe is known to do back then. I don't know, I'm not familiar with that. And that's how I discovered that anime gets released there. So anyway, I was intrigued by my dad's and uncle's conversation and I decided to watch it in my own sneaky way that I just explained. And I saw the two parts in the span of a week and I basically fell in love with this anime. Literally, I loved everything about it. The weird thing is that I did not know that part 3 existed up until the Blu-ray box that came out in 2015 and when I held the set for the first time and I realized that there is a part 3, I watched it immediately and I forgot it immediately. <sighs> More on that later. So before I start I need to say something. This video will only focus on part 1 and 2 and I will not talk about the US version and by the end I will talk briefly about part 3. Megazone 2-3 is a cyberpunk robot anime that ran for 3 parts. Part 1 and 2 were theatrical films that ran for 18 minutes each and they were a year apart, 1985 and 1986. And Part 3 was an OVA released in 1989 and it spanned 2 episodes, each was 50 boring minutes long. During the making of Part 1, it was originally supposed to be a 12 episode series. But the plan was cancelled and the director worked on what he had done and made the part 1 anime film. And it wasn't subtitled part 1 because there was no intention to have multiple parts? Which I find that to be odd since it ended on a cliffhanger. So a lot of people who worked on the Macros series worked on Megazone 2-3. And as a fan of Macros, this anime felt like a home to me. And each part has a different director and character designer. As a result, each part looked different. Part 1 was directed by the legendary Noboru Ishiguro, who directed Legend of the Galactic Heroes, the first Macro series, and the amazing movie Macros Do You Remember Love. Character designs were made by Toshiki Hirano, who is hands down one of my favorite character designers, easily in the top 5 for me. He worked on a lot of anime that are personal favorites of mine, like the Ikuza series, Ninja Senshi Tupigake, Dangayo, Zuriyamer, and a lot more. His type of character designs are filled with life and the most 80s, so he is a nostalgia injection for me. Part 2 was directed by another legend, Ichiro Itano, who I previously talked about on my Angel Cop video, and he also worked on the Macro series. He is responsible for the Macro's action scenes that are called Macro's Missile Massacre or Itano Circus. Character designs were made by Yasumi Umetsu. He is the character designer for two amazing Tatsunako OVAs, the 1993 Kashan and the 1994 Gachaman. The mechanical designer for all three parts is Shinji Aramaki, who is the original creator of this anime, and he worked on the production designs for the Bubblegum Crisis series and directed the Appleseed movies. A guest character designer who worked on all three parts was Haruhiko Mikimoto, who made the character designs for the Macro series and many classics such as Gunbuster and Gundam 0080 War in the Pocket. So, what did he do in Megazone 2 3? He only made the character design for one character, who was Eve. 
Uh, yep, that, that's what he did. Kinda odd, to be honest here. The screenplay was written by a veteran even for that time, and it was Hiroyuki Hoshiyama. He's a scriptwriter for many robot anime like my favorite anime of all time, the first Marvel Suit Gundam. He also wrote the screenplay for Daitan 3, City Hunter, and was the original creator of V Farm and Dagram. If that doesn't make him a legend, then I don't know what will. As you can see, amazing people worked on this anime. It's basically a dream team, a super group if you may. The story follows the teenager Shogo Yagi, a delinquent biker who stole a bike made by the military which can turn into a robot and in that bike holds many secrets for the city he lives in and the entire world, hinting at the fact that things are not what they appear to be. Throughout his journey he meets the ballet dancer Yui, his love interest, the mysterious pop singer Eve, and a lot of wonderful supporting characters, and eventually all of them band together against the system for freedom. The world looks futuristic, but it has a lot of 1980s technology and culture that embraces it. And it's not because this anime came out in the 80s. There is a reason why this world looks a lot like that decade, and the reason is brilliant and that's why I love this story so much. The setting plays a crucial role in the story as if it is its own character. There is a lot of Macros influence of course, some few slice of life elements that explores the teenage characters, especially Yui and her friends, and the passion that drives the youth into rebellion and independence is really well written here. The romance between Shogo and Yui is so so sweet, yet not perfect. It has its ups and downs which made me love the relationship more because it feels organic in a way. The plot has a lot of twists and shocking moments and goes to unpredictable places. And by part 2 all the stakes become higher and higher until the climax of the story with a satisfying perfect ending. Until part 3 came along. But anyway, I, I don't care, part 3 doesn't exist to me. Again more on that later. Shogo Yagi, the main character. Just like any other character in this anime, he is not perfect, personality wise. He is reckless and crazy which is why I love him so much. I just love unpredictable characters and he is to me. Sometimes other characters get shocked by what he does and so does the viewer. He would do anything for his friends and eventually gains a lot of allies who would do anything for him. Yui, Shogo's girlfriend, a ballet dancer and she's cute and kinda innocent. During the beginning of the story she acts foolishly and stupid, but eventually she grows as a character. It's like her relationship with Shogo made both of these characters mature and evolve. Love conquers all. BD, the villain. He is one of the military's big guys, and holy shit this guy is intimidating. He doesn't show up a lot, but when he does, the tension rises up with his firm and heartless personality, and up until his last scene, he remains this calm, intimidating character. There are a lot of supporting characters in the story, and every one of them is unique. They provide comic relief, they make us love the main characters more, and they do not overstay their screen time. Basically, the perfect supporting characters. This is where this anime is uncommon. Part 1 and 2's character designs look vastly different from one another to a point where there are no similarities at all. But thankfully that's just when it comes to how they look. Let's start with part 1. Toshiki Hirano does a fantastic job like always. His charm from his other works really shows here. I just love his work and I know I'm fanboying a lot here but I can't help it. Whenever I think of 80's character designs, most of the time I think of his work. I mean look how the hair looks, it's just pretty! Shogo's hair look a lot like Kishan's hair, and Yui's hair is adorable. This hair color is basically my weakness, and I loved how her apartment looks. Yes, yes, I know it's not a big deal, but I love it! Whatever. Now for part 2's design. Yasumi Umetsu does another brilliant work. The colors are more vibrant, everything looks glossy and neat, especially the character's hair and clothing. That punk look goes into full gear. It's really pleasant to look at and what is really obvious is how the characters look different from part 1. At first I was lost of who is who until they said the name of the characters. Everyone looks older and taller and it would make sense if there was like a 3 or 4 year time skip. 
but no, it was a half a year time skip. But I forgot about it quickly because they do look astonishing. BD menacing look got into a new level in part 2 and I prefer this look. And they made Yui look way more beautiful. The only thing that was missing is her hair from part 1. You know, maybe the difference in the character designs between part 1 and 2 represents how they lost their innocence. Like in part 1 they look young, cute and adorable, where in part 2 they look older, dirty, mature, with detailed sex scene. Or maybe it's just different because a different person worked on it. I should move on. Mechanical designs for the robots are terrific. They are not gigantic and they look simple, but I love them. Especially in part 2 with the glossy art, that always works with any robot. The setting, like I mentioned before, is the 1980s with everything. Heck, there is even a Thundercast pinball machine! The animation is a high point for me. The fact that part 1 went through development problems is mind blowing, cause it looks fantastic. The robot battles and transformations are all filled with detail and it is obvious that the studio put a lot of work and effort into this. And then they took everything that was impressive in part 1 and made it superior in every way for part 2 and it looks spectacular. In part 1 there was blood, but in part 2 they go on full gore goodness, it is fantastic and such a turn on. Everything in part 2 gets better, more fluid animation with more magnificent space battles. It was euphoric. Music is part of the many themes of this anime, and thank Eve it is superb. Every song by Eve is perfect in my book. I listened to her songs for years and they still did not get dull or boring. They are catchy and they range from high energetic songs to ballads. I'm obsessed with Eve, just like most of the characters in the anime. And the soundtrack is what you expect, rock music and 80 synthetic sounds. And here's a quick list of my 3 favorite Eve songs. Lonely Sunset, Sentimental Over My Back, and Please Tell Me The Secret. <sighs> you see the love I showed just now for this anime? None of those feelings are present for part 3, which failed in every department in my opinion. And to this day, I do not consider it to be a sequel or anything. It doesn't exist to me, even though it is written by the same person. I just chose to ignore it. Why? Because I can! But for the sake of this video, part 3 will exist in my life briefly. There will be spoilers about the ending of part 2 by the way, you have been warned. The first thing I noticed when I watched it is that none of the main characters are present except for Eve. So apparently the story takes place centuries after the ending of part 2. And you know what happened? People got into the same situation as before. People are trapped into one place, controlled by the lies of the government, they are robots, and eventually a war. And I was like, what is going on? They are ruining the ending of part 2. And I hate the new characters. They are basically rehashes of the previous characters. Nothing original about them. The art and animation are not impressive. It's like everything took a nosedive in part 3. The entire time I did not care about the plot, I did not care about the characters, everything was lifeless. This plot is boring. Part 2 ended when the main characters finally reached Earth and they started a new peaceful life. This sequel is not needed. The story ended. During the first episode, I thought this was a prequel because I was in denial. But in episode 2, it was perfectly clear that it is a sequel. And that ending... <laughs> Everything just went back to how it's supposed to be in part 2's ending. You know, the peaceful free life. So what was the point of part 3 story-wise? Nothing. Talk about unnecessary. There is no reason why this should exist, it just didn't work for me at all. Eve was the only thing that kept me from falling asleep. Everything else was tedious, and it is a shame because this is Megazone 2-3. Okay, now I'm done. This anime, part 1 and 2, captured my heart the second I watched it, and more than two decades later I still get excited by watching those parts. Everything from art, animation, story, and music is timeless for me. I love the robot battles and their designs, the characters are memorable and fun to watch. Even when they are just talking, it's entertaining for me because the setting and the atmosphere is really special. It triggers all of my happy thoughts, and as the 80s goes farther and farther away, 
This anime becomes more special to me because it reminds me of my childhood decade that I miss so dearly. <laughs>